Hello, it's Christine from Hollis Hands Create. Welcome. Welcome to episode number 52 of my channel, Hollis Hands Create. My name is Christine, and I'm back for another update, uh, much quicker than uh, normal, so um, I hope you're happy about that. Um, welcome to all viewers and uh, subscribers, and if you're not a subscriber, I hope that um, you'll give, us a, give me a chance to um, win you over, and you'll wanna hit that um, subscribe button and, and hit the bell to be notified of um, any other episodes that happen to come along. Uh, my channel is mostly about cross stitch. There are some other crafty endeavors that I will um, show from time to time, time to time. But today is um, primarily cross stitch. Um, and since I'm back after only two weeks, um, I don't have a tremendous amount to show, but I do have enough progress that I wanted to go ahead and film. Um, also, I have, um, a nice uh, giveaway at the end of the video that I wanted to uh, be able to go ahead and give out now before the holiday. And um, this is kind of my last shot to, to get everything going. Uh, my daughter Savannah flies in tomorrow and um, then Christmas kind of gets really rolling, right? Um, Chris is in LA, he's flying back tonight. And so once I pick him up, we've got a, a day planned um, tomorrow to, um, I've got to finish up the shop I closed last night and I've got to finish up getting all the current orders out the door and we've got Christmas wrapping to do, especially Savannah's because she's a peeker. So, um, I have to make sure that those are all wrapped in, under the tree. Otherwise she'll be digging. She's been a snooper her whole life. She's 31 years old and she's still a snooper. Um, so we've been trying to get out and about. We were down at the plaza. Um, I've inserted a couple pictures of some plaza lights. Um, love going down there. It's always, you know, it's always a little crowded, but it's such just such a, a beautiful winter scene and, um, you know, classic Kansas City. Um, we've got tickets to the Nelson Atkins Museum. Um, they've got a Monet exhibit, and Monet is my absolute all-time favorite artist. And um, so I'm very excited to go down and uh, wander around in the museum and, and see his exhibit. And um, other than that, it's just, you know, Christmas and food and fr friends and family. So um, on to the stitching. And let's see, if you have been following me for a while, you'll know that in the last um, couple of videos, I've introduced some assignment stitching that I am doing with some friends of mine. And I love the encouragement. I'm sure if you've watched Christy, Cross Hatch Quilts, or Olivia, uh, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, Becky, Socks for Mom, just put out a video this week after a, a little bit of a hiatus. And you can watch any one of us and, and see what we're working on. Um, and I believe that Christy even posted uh, maybe some pictures of a couple of our actual assignment regimens for a couple of the designs. If you're interested, um, you can take a look at that or message one of us. Um, so first, um, we didn't have a tremendous amount of homework for December, or at least I didn't. Not everyone participates in every single um, project, which is kind of fun. You know, you jump in and out of the ones that you, you wanna be part of and we just encourage each other on everything that we're stitching. So the first one that I had to work on um, this month was Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. And this is by Kathy Barrick. It's affectionately referred to as The Beast. Now, if you were to purchase this design or have this design, yours won't have like all those lines on it. You'll see that I actually was the person in charge of giving out the assignments for this design, and so mine is marked up. So let's see, okay, so first assignment, and I believe everybody started in the same block, was this block. And then second assignment, I believe Olivia and Christy went down 
hill because they um, have already, this is the second go around for them on this design and they had already stitched that house and neither one wanted to do that house. And so they came down and are doing this area here. I went over and am doing this block here. So, or have done this block here, I'll show you. I didn't iron y'all. Here is my progress. So everything here was first month. This is second month. And I'm using the Vicki Clayton silks um, conversion for this particular design. And her silks are just smooth as butter. Can you see those bats in the roof? You see their eyes. Can you see the bats in the roof? This is really just a cool design. And let's see, I'm stitching this on, what fabric am I stitching this on? Well, I believe it is old, oh, old stationery from uh, Seraphim Fabrics. So again, there you go. And of course, this is like a, you know, Halloween-y, autumnal type piece, but um, I really am, am, enjoy, am enjoying it regardless of the, of the season. So, a lot of fun. Okay, next up on my list was um, Dwelling Place. And this is a Teresa Kogut design came out with earlier this year and I just fell in love with that border. I love the stars and then down here you've got more like a, you know, a flowery type, you know, design. It's a little bit um, patriotic in the colors that are used, but it's not really patriotic either. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful design. I'll show you my progress. We are on um, block three. And this was a, this only, this block three only took me um, three evenings to stitch. And there's my progress so far. I have a new overhead light. And I don't mean like just to use for filming. We actually purchased a, a new light to go over our, I'm sitting in where our um, kitchen table is. This is kind of a combination kitchen, eating area and hearth room to the side. So we purchased a new light and this thing is super bright, which is great for eating, but it's a little brighter than I had anticipated for being in here. So I hope this isn't coming across really washed out to you guys. But, so um, down here was block one. This middle section here, like to the urn, was block two. And then everything up here was block three. I'll get that a little closer so you can see. And I'm stitching this on 40 count embellish, which is um, an atomic ranch fabric. And I'm using um, like 99% the call for colors. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so Friday nights, um, we stitch a Hawk Run hollow piece. Um, I believe Becky started uh, what's called Friday Nights and Hawk Run, and you can join on any Friday night if you with any Hawk Run that you have. Doesn't have to be any specific one. And I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago that I was going to be revamping um, and bringing out of what I thought was the it's done bin uh, village at Hawk Run Hollow. So the first Friday night after I had filmed. Um, which two weeks ago, I sat down with, you know, the ladies, some of the ladies that we Zoom, I Zoom with and started. 
Now, if you'll remember, I had told you it was on 32 count Lakeside. So I started stitching, started working at it, and I was just like, I just, I don't like this. I'm not. It took me probably half an hour into the Zoom conversation to then say, you know what, that's it. I, I'm done, I can't do it. So, bummer there, but um, I went through, dug around, and I think I have found some fabric that is in a 40 count that I'm gonna like a lot better. We'll see. I'm gonna, I didn't even pull it out this last Friday. Um, I worked on Lazy Bear Mountain and um, I'm gonna have to do some, maybe some, you know, some test um, stitches because I wasn't 100% sure. I was trying to get close to the Lakeside Linen Sand Dune, which is what was called for and which is what I had in the 32 count, but I don't have any of that in the 40 count. So I was trying to get close to something. So we'll see. I, um, I pulled, I think it's called Old Sampler by Victorian Motto. It has a little more modeling in it than I kind of wanted, but we'll see. That, that piece has so much almost full coverage in some of those blocks that the modeling may not even really, really show. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So um, this coming Friday, we're not stitching because it's, you know, the, the Friday right before the holiday and everybody's got a lot of plans and things like that going on. So, um, and my next, I believe the next Friday, I actually need, I will have to be working on my um, Shores, Hawk Run, Shores at Hawk Run Hollow homework. So I'll be working on Shores. So I'm not sure when I'll bring Village back out, but sometime in the next, you know, next few weeks. So I'll show you or let you know how that goes. Um, Becky said she watched my last video and she was just laughing because she knew that that 32 count, I wasn't gonna make it. And sure enough, half an hour or so, and it was done. It was definitely done. Okay, so let's see. Free time stitching. So since I only had a couple of assignments, I had some free time stitching. And if you'll remember, um, I showed you a couple of ideas I had for um, some Christmas smalls. And Prancer from Hobby House Press is the one that I decided to start. And I did. Not only did I start it, but I finished it. And I felt I finished it. I'm very, very happy with it. I stitched this on 40 count fawn by Picture This Plus. Now, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to leave this bow. Well, okay. So it's actually just stuck in here with a pin. Okay, well, the bow is only stuck in with a pin. You can see the top of the pin. So I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave the bow on or take it off? I backed this with some wool, Weeks Dye Works wool in the color Juniper, which is a beautiful Christmassy kind of color. And then I just had some of this um, yarn and I thought, you know, I really like that. So let me know what you think about the bow. But anyway, there's Prancer from Hobby House. And I'll show you that one more time. I'm sure it's available on their website, hobbyhouse.com. Hobby House Needleworks, I think, maybe. And there's Prancer. So that is, I believe, finish number 16 for the year. And that was super simple and quick to do. Um, the color palette you know, classical greens and reds and golds. Beautiful, beautiful. So that left um, a little bit of time because I have a stitch that starts today. Today's the solstice, December 21st. So I didn't, I just had a couple of nights and I thought, all right, what do I wanna do? Well, I'm working on my 2024 plans. And of course, obviously incorporating in all of our assignments and looking at my whip list to see some things that for my free time stitching, I, you know, some whips that I want to get taken care of. And so one of them 
was this Happy Heart Sampler from Birds of a Feather. And I apologize that this is out of print. Um, so it's only going to be available in secondary market, but this is the Happy Heart Sampler. And And you've seen this before when I started it. So I pulled it back out. Um, I'm stitching this on a, a primitive hair, um, 40 count old Massachusetts. And what I had done on it previously before it got put away was just this part here and the outline of the heart. So I went ahead and finished the heart. Now on the sampler, it has 1832 in here, and I put in 1964. Um, this is a happy heart sampler, so there's a lot of initials and different things um, that have, like in here, it's got true, the word true. And you've got initials and these double hearts here. So there's a lot of sentimentality about this particular sampler. So I think what I'm gonna do is, my husband and I both were born in 1964, so that's why I put that here. I think in here, instead of the words true, I'm gonna put 1986, because that's the year we were married. And then of course our initials are gonna go into the double hearts here. Or I might leave true and or put our initials here and put the you know the the date you know the year here. I'm not sure, but that's it's basically going to be kind of a a dedication sampler to to my husband and I. So I'll show you that once again. It is beautiful, and I don't think if I actually spend some time getting it done, I don't think it really will take that long. So that was my other free time um, stitching where I um, picked a whip that I wanna work on and get finished and that's what I did, Happy Heart Sampler. So before I go through plans, I am gonna just show you, I received a sweet little gift um, from a friend, um, Cindy C. Stitches, which if you're on Instagram, everybody knows Cindy. And if you don't, you need to be following Cindy C. Stitches because she has one of the most um, inspirational um, accounts to follow. You will never miss for anything fun to see. And she sent me this sweet little, little gift. It says, keep calm and stitch on. Isn't that nice? I just love this. I think it's really sweet. Thank you so much, Cindy. I've already thanked her, but I wanted to show on here as well. So, and then my husband, always flea marketing, antiquing, and that kind of thing. He has, um, he goes on the weekends um, in the mornings down to a place down in um, Kansas City, um, down. I actually think it's on the Kansas City, Kansas side. Um, anyway, called the Swap and Shop. He's always, you know, looking for his own things, which of course is why he goes, but he also keeps an eye out for me for some stitching goodies that I might, you know, like or enjoy. And so I'll show you. Um, he, he bought a just a whole box lot, which I really had to dig through to, you know, get anything out of it. It was chock full. Um, probably at a garage sale or an estate sale or something. Everybody threw the ladies um, sewing implements and things like that into a big box and, and sold it. And so he, he bought the box for, I think, like five bucks or something like that. But in so digging, this was in here. This cool pincushion elephant. And look. The tail is a tape measure. Isn't that sweet? Absolutely love it. And it has an old, the remnants of an old sticker on here. 
so I'm not 100% sure, you know, what it said, but this is very typical um, with the crazing and the style and everything, very typical of like a 60s um, sewing implement. And I just love it. I think it's so cute. So that's going right into my collection. And then digging around, look at these scissors. You know what, can you see these? Let me put them in front of something here. Beautiful scissors. And they were in this little sheath. They're about three there. I think you can see them pretty well there. They're about three inches, three and a half. But there's no there's no marking on them. But um, you know, I saw a few different brands of scissors in the shop, and so I was kind of looking. They actually look a little bit like a Solingen. So I, you know, the Happy Hearts design. I don't know. Well, I will have to see, but or maybe I'll never see. But anyway, I thought they were very sweet. There were lots of like little, some other pearl buttons and other things that I didn't, you know, bring to show, but those were the two kind of bigger treasures out of that um, box lot that he got. So I always am very happy when he comes home with something, says, got you something, you know, cause you just never know what, it, what it's gonna be. And sometimes you get some real treasures out of it. So I thought I would share those things with you. Um, let's move on to plans. I hope I'm not, Feel like I'm talking really fast, but I am going to try to kind of move right through. Um, so today is December 21st. It's the solstice, and I have a new start for the solstice that I'm stitching with a few friends, and it is the winter moon, which I think is a very appropriate design to start on the solstice. My friend Carol and I were chatting about it, and then um, we'd also talked with Yvette about it, and then um, my friend Katrina is now joining. So, um, very excited to start this one. I went ahead and ordered this because it is exclusive to the Country Sampler up in Spring Green um, for a year. It just came out um, maybe three, four weeks ago. Um, and it is stitched on salt bush, which I believe I'm going to go ahead um, and keep it on the salt bush. So if you're interested in this one, you need to get in touch with Country Sampler and see if you can um, maybe place an order for the kit. And I'll show you. So there's the, there's the kit. Now I changed my fabric to 40 count from the typical 36 that they usually kit with. But um, I absolutely, absolutely love the moons that Paulette has come out with. So far she has, um, she came out with originally spring moon, then uh, summer moon, and now winter moon. And I have chatted with her and there will indeed be a autumn moon. Um, she said, now ask me if I've designed it yet. And I'm like, oh boy. And she said, no, I haven't, but I will. So I let her to know we were, let her know today we were starting and she better get on the horse and get that designed. Um, because the model stitching to one of these, God bless the model who stitched this. I think this one was Natalia Canada who stitched this one and when you take on one of Paulette's houses, you're taking on a project. So it's gonna take a, a bit of time for someone to stitch this, so get on it there, Miss, Miss Paulette. Just to quickly show you, here's Spring Moon. And so we'll be stitching the Winter Moon for the next three months, and then on um, March 21st, we will pick up Spring Moon, whether we're finished with Winter Moon or not. So we will, Add in Spring Moon, and on June 21st, we will begin with the Summer Moon, which I'm sure most of you have seen this one. I have these all ready to roll. Now, this, this one in Spring Moon were stitched on baked clay, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this one 
to Saltbush and have it match Wintermoon. I think those reds will work really well on the Saltbush as well. And then I'll have two on Saltbush and um, I have requested that uh, the Autumn Moon be designed on baked clay. So that I'll have two on baked clay and two on Saltbush. So we'll see how that goes. Baked clay from Fox and Rabbit is an absolutely beautiful linen. So that's today or tonight's start. So I'll be working on that tonight. Then tomorrow um, we have the uh, Crazy Girls are starting um, North Pole. Yes. I'm very excited about this this one. Can you see that? You've probably seen it all over um, Instagram and it's been super popular since it came out. It's by Kathy Barrick. And I will be stitching it on 40 count Dixie Samplers Toasted Coconut. I think the, the called for is flannel flour, but um, I decided there's you know there's a decent amount of modeling in flannel flour, but you really don't see a lot of modeling in the in the in the model modeling in the model. Um, so I decided to go with this particular linen, which has a tiny bit of variation modeling in it, but not like big chunks. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Again, I hope this is all not blowing out. Believe it or not, I actually unscrewed two of the bulbs. It's still just really light. And the ch only change that I'm gonna make is on this, she calls for, she uses NPI, because if anybody knows Kathy Barrett, you, you know that she almost always uses NPI. And she called for the coat to be done in 205 or DMC, which I'm using the DMCs, 356, which is, let me show you here, you know, kind of a lighter color, right? You can see his coat, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch it to 221. I just, I'm not a huge fan of that pinky orange um, for Santa. I, I like the deeper color, but it's still in the same family of the pinks, reds uh, that DMC has. And so with the border, that's actually two different colors, right? One is supposed to be the 356, the other would be 3064, the light that, you know, the lighter one is, yeah, the lighter one is supposed to be 3064. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna use these two colors. I'm gonna switch the 356 to the lighter color to replace 3064, and I'm going to use the 221 as the darker one. And I think that's gonna look really, really pretty. Now this one is gonna be a gift. If you watched my last video, you heard me talking about that I'm gonna probably replace the words North Pole here and um, put in a dedication to my uh, mother-in-law and my daughter. And then I'm gonna gift it to my, to my daughter. So one really fun thing that Kathy uh, Barrett put out in her um, Etsy shop is these gift tags. Aren't those sweet? So I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna actually include them um, with the design when I gift it to my daughter and then she can use them. So love those, love those, love those. So that's tomorrow's start. My needles are gonna be flying, people. All right, I'm gonna go through just a few more plans um, and then we'll get to uh, giveaway and just a, a couple other things. And if, don't forget, if you haven't gotten your 2024 Book of Days planner, you still have quite a few left in the shop. We will be back open on the 28th. So you'll be able to get, 
get yours then if you wish. Um, okay, so with my crazy girls, um, I think Yvette had asked um, if we if she showed a whip list and everybody looked at a whip list, could we come up with one design that might be on all of our whip lists? And we came up with Live on Little. And I believe all of us had it started except for maybe Becky, but she was willing to, to jump right in because she said, I always wanted to stitch this design. So we all have Live on Little in varying degrees, but none of us have a very big start. I had a decent amount. I actually was probably halfway through here um, doing the, I always start in this, this side here. So I was through, had the big crab and the little fish and I think I was halfway through the whale down here and I just wasn't loving it. I wasn't loving it because I had gotten this as a kit when I went to a retreat with Paulette um, and it was kitted with the 36 count hog bristle and I'm just not a 36 count stitcher. I always feel like that one strand on 36 feels like the coverage isn't quite enough, but if you use two strands, it's too much. So I decided to switch to a 40 count, and I also really wasn't loving the creatures in the water. So when I restarted, I restarted it on a 46 count, show you this real quick. Um, can you see that? And all I've got is the bottom line and a couple of waves. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to do, if you can see this, I don't know if you can or not, um, I'm going to do the wave line and I might add another solid line underneath there as well, just to kind of anchor it a little bit more. But our first assignment Christy um, gave us was actually to do the border. So um, I'm not gonna do much more at the bottom. I'm gonna, I have to start right in on, on to be able to get this border done for the homework assignment. And we are supposed to start this on January 1st. So it'll be nice to, you know, not all of our crazy girl stuff is all like start, start, start. We also are looking for common whips and things like that, that we can, that we can actually do and, and um, encourage each other and kind of push each other. And then, you know, at the end of the time, we're gonna have some beautiful things that are started. So that's January 1st. Now I already had a, uh, in the back of my mind, a January 1st start planned. And I'm not gonna abandon that. Um, back probably in the summer, I think I showed some designs that I have been wanting to start and was looking to pick from. And um, this was one of them. It's Feather Your Nest. And this is um, an older design I believe from 2009, and it's from uh, Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And I've always loved this, and so I decided, you know what, I'm sticking with it. So this is going to be my independent um, New Year's Day start. And I love it, love it, love it. I have it all kitted with um, Color and Cotton's Toasted Coconut which I think is gonna be beautiful on it. And I'm doing all of the, well, it may call for all DMC. Yeah, it actually calls for all DMC, so that's nice. So, anyway, looking forward to that one. So basically, I'm gonna just spend most of New Year's Day probably watching football and stitching all day. It's gonna be the best New Year's Day start ever. And then our last one that I'm gonna show that's on our calendar, because I don't believe we have any other starts planned for past this one. Oh, January 5th. And I wanna say, 
Olivia came up with January 5th and I'd have to refresh you know, my memory or ask her again, but I thought she said something about that's the end of the 12 days of Christmas. And um, now Christy already has this stitched, but the rest of us are gonna be stitching by Kathy Barrick again and Heaven and Nature saying, beautiful, 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 love it. And to prove that this can go really fast, if you watch Carol Saltbox, she started hers, I think, on Thanksgiving and had it done in like a couple of weeks. She just whipped right through. And she changed this date here, this 1827, to, oh, help me, Carol, 1731, 1719, 17-something, 17 which is the year that the poem was written that was then turned into the song. So I'm going to, I think all of us actually, we all love that idea. So I think we're all going to probably um, borrow her idea and change that. Gorgeous. So this one we actually have um, planned to finish in about six months or so. It's not huge. This is, 186 by 153, so on a 20 slash 40 count, you would be, have a design that is nine and a quarter by seven and a half. So I think that'll even just fit into a regular frame. So, woo, very excited about this one. So that is all of the um, crazy girls. Um, I've included, and you know, I always include some pictures of things that are going on in, in uh, my life or with my grandkids or whatever. I've included a picture of some squirrels. And if you're looking at it going, what in the world? Well, that is our theme photo for our group chat for the crazy girls. Um, a bunch of squirrels looking in to see what's the next project or what's the next thing that we're going to chase after. We thought it was very appropriate and we love it. And so that's why I included it. So I thought I'd just explain that real quick. So, okay. Um, I'll be back in just a second. I need to kind of clear everything off here and, um, we will give away a gift card. All right. Okay. I'm back. <clears throat> so, um, just real quickly. Um, shop is closed until 1228. Um, we are coming back with a sale, so you might want to um, put that in your calendar. Um, make sure to get your planners if you don't have one. And let's see. Um, I think that's it. Um, I truly enjoyed reading through all of your comments and seeing what everybody seemed to um, enjoy stitching on. And um, I did have a question about this, um, let me see if I can kind of push this over just a little bit. There, can you see? Okay, so this is a really large um, primitive rug, wool hooked rug that belonged to my mother-in-law. And if you heard me talking about my reasons for stitching North Pole, she loved those old type Santas, the wooden carved Santas and, and this look. It's very prairie schooler looking, right? But it's actually um, a large rug and um, we inherited it and I hang it every year and I absolutely love it. Um, doesn't quite fit my style of Santa that I collect, but it's just, I just love it, it's gorgeous. Um, it seems, reading through all the comments that um, I didn't mention my favorite. You know, I look at each one and think, oh, that's my favorite. Oh, that's my favorite. But honestly, probably the one that is right above me. Um, and I'll put that in the, the picture roll. And um, that is from Eloquent Stitches. I stitched it quite a long time ago. It's just called Merry Christmas. And um, I love it. It's done. I had stitched it on a, like an opalescent fabric. So when you can see it up close, it kind of shimmers and it has beading, red beading in it. And it's just, I love it. It's very simple, but to me, it is very eloquent. So that's probably my true favorite. Um, if I look back at all of these that are on the, the uh, wall back here, each one, I, you know, seem to have a, um, 
you know, a memory kind of attached to each one. And, and I love that particular memory or, or something like that. But um, when you look at one and it kind of gives you all the feels, that's probably the one that I love the most. Um, so I, there I've answered it and I'm sorry that I didn't share what my favorite was. Um, reading through all your comments again, it seems that Prairie Schooler and Blackbird Designs seem to be the overwhelming favorite among all of you stitchers. Uh, we've all been stitching Prairie Schooler for so long and they're just such classic designs and now they've kind of become vintage, right? It's coming out in the 80s. Um, so anyway, it seemed to be most popular. But without further ado, um, after using the random generator selector, um, I was actually very happy when this name uh, came up because of the comment that, that she left. And I don't actually have a name. We just have her handle. It's CBS8404. And it's CBS8404. And congratulations, you're the winner. And um, I will have my information in the drop-down box. So please email me with your name and mailing address. And um, oh no, you don't even have to give me your mailing address. <clears throat> I just need your email and your name. And uh, send me, drop me a quick email and I will get your gift certificate created and email it to you. And congratulations. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. However you celebrate, I hope that the season is just wonderful for you. I hope you get a lot of stitching done. You enjoy whatever weather that you might happen to have and family and friends and just it's an enjoyable season. So um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I will see you again soon. Thank you so much. And remember, create every day. All right. Bye-bye now.